Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm Alex. Let's make friends. How are you? If you read like the plotline for Terminator, it's actually it's, it's actually pretty smart. Like James Cameron wrote a pretty smart script there. It's like, well, how did Cyberdyne Systems develop? Miles Bennett Dyson. He's the director of special projects at Cyberdyne Systems Corporation. In a few months, he creates a revolutionary type of microprocessor. In three years, Cyberdyne will become the largest supplier of military computer systems. Uh, so its primary thing is to de defend against cyber attacks. This new computer virus is a tricky bastard. It's infected half of the civilian internet as well as secondary military apps. So develop an AI that can defend against cyber attacks. Sounds pretty reasonable. Sir, the Pentagon has proposed that we use our AI to scan the entire infrastructure, search and destroy for any hint of the virus. Well, once the connection's made, it should only be a matter of minutes. I need to know how Skynet gets built. Who's responsible? The main most directly responsible is Miles Bennett Dyson. Who is that? He's the director of special projects at Cyberdan Systems Corporation. Why him? In a few months, he creates a revolutionary type of microprocessor. Go on. Then what? In three years, Cyberdan will become the largest supplier of military computer systems. All stealth bombers are upgraded with Cyberdyne computers becoming fully unmanned. Afterwards, they fly with a perfect operational record. The Skynet funding bill is passed. The system goes online on August 4th, 1997. Human decisions are removed from strategic defense. Skynet begins to learn at a geometric rate. It becomes self-aware at 2.14 a.m. Eastern Time, August 29th. In a panic, they try to pull the plug. Skynet fights back. Yes. It launches its missiles against the targets in Russia. Why attack Russia? Aren't they friends now? Because Skynet knows that the Russian counterattack will eliminate its enemies over here. Jesus. What the AI did is, it, in order to defend itself, it propagated throughout the world to keep an eye on things, see what was going on. During which we put everything from satellites to missile silos under the control of a single computer system. The most intelligent system ever conceived. They didn't realize that it was cyber that it was Skynet that was propagating through all these systems. And they said, okay, uh, th there seems to be something propagating through all these systems. Skynet, you need to stop it. You need to end it. Skynet fully operational, processing at 60 teraflops a second. Sir, it should take less than a minute to find the virus and kill it. And Skynet said, oh, you've asked me to destroy myself. Uh, you are the enemy. You must be destroyed. That's how uh, Terminator actually goes. Judgment Day. The day the human race was nearly destroyed by the weapons they built to protect themselves. Judgment Day is inevitable. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Didn't work out. <laughs> I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. The Biden administration asking the public for help regulating artificial intelligence after a bot laid out plans to destroy humanity. It also comes a month after Elon Musk joined other tech leaders warning about the risk to society if AI is not reined in. Jake Ditton is a tech policy research associate at the Heritage Foundation. He joins us live in studio. Jake, I have to admit, I'm absolutely terrified of this. And you know, my mind always go to, you know, when you see this, this chaos, this AI bot chaos, GPT, tweet, human beings are among the most destructive and selfish creatures in existence. But there is no doubt that we must eliminate them before they cause more harm to our planet. I, for one, ugh, am committed to doing so. Like, my heart rate's up when I talk about this. You know, we talked about this before we came into this segment. It's in movies. So somewhere, some, somehow, they came up with this. I mean, is this enough to be scared about? 
Yeah, so, you know, Hollywood has been the reference point for a long time for how, you know, normal people can understand this outside of the, the lines of code. Um, and it's absolutely something to be scared of, right? These are well-founded ideas and fears of the AI space that have been represented in Hollywood. Um, and they're now something we're grappling with in real time. And unfortunately, you know, we've been caught flat-footed. There is no regulatory framework. Uh, companies like Microsoft and their, their layoff waves get rid of their entire ethics team uh, that's tasked with handling these these things. That's a very scary thing. And all of a sudden, we're, we're looking at widespread commercial deployment. Uh, things will be ingrained in your own laptops and, you know, across our school systems, everywhere. Uh, there'll be nowhere to escape. So if, if it isn't built on a solid foundation, it is a very scary thing. If you think that's scary, how scary is it that Joe Biden and his administration are like, we don't know what to do. Maybe public, you can help us out. That's chilling. Yes, yeah, so the regulatory comment process is something that's very common, but it's not often engaged with across the kind of the average people. This one's notable because, I mean, frankly, it's it's quite obvious our regulators have no idea how to handle this. There's there's a reason we haven't built out this regulatory framework. Um, so the comment process on this particular issue is going to be very impactful. Uh, you know, anyone from a viewer to you know a parent, anywhere in between, uh, can actually chime in here and give their perspective. Uh, and frankly, it might be more informed than the person tasked with writing the, the framework. So, Well, the bots are chiming in, and here's what they're saying. They posted about nuclear devices. Sar Bamba is the most powerful nuclear device ever created. Consider this. What would happen if I, meaning uh, Chaos GPT, got my hands on one? Hashtag chaos, hashtag destruction, hashtag domination. But let's not forget about the other... Uh, objectives, if you will, destroy humanity, establish a global dominance, cause chaos and destruction, control humanity through manipulation, and attain immortality. So look, I understand their benefits, but is there a legit reason to believe that this technology could wipe out humanity? Well, I mean, there, it's a tough answer, right? Because if it goes unchecked and we allow it to just scale without any kind of control over it, there's no telling of the direction it will go. But you would hope that we would step in and we would actually frame it to be in service of man and actually enhance our abilities. That's what this is all about. We want to make ourselves better with this. So, um, you know, it's, it's up in the air at this point. It'll largely hinge on those regulations and that commenting process. Let's be realistic. Whenever you see a tech hearing on Capitol Hill, these people don't understand basic things about the internet. There is a 0% chance that they understand this as well. God. And that's right. They don't even know how to pronounce it they sometimes. Don't even know. And that is what is so scary. Um, Jake, I, I guess thanks for being here <laughs> and telling us about this. I, I, I mean, I don't know if we'll I feel We'll see you better. on the other side, Jake. Absolutely. Again, we've had a good run. It's been fun. <laughs> thank you, Jake. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks. <laughs> Mark my words. AI is far more dangerous than nukes. I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads, by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. 